a world-renowned violin player and teacher who attracts students from all over the globe. Dr. Jan Sadivka knows how to make music. Mm, beautiful, isn't it? But to produce beautiful music like that, it takes a lot more than just natural talent, incredible dedication and years of learning. It takes a very good violin, and that can be expensive. One of the frustrations of Jan's 50-year teaching career is that most of his students can't afford to learn on a decent violin. How can he inspire the virtuosos of tomorrow when they're forced to learn on inferior instruments? The answer was to talk to an engineer. Well, it started off as a joke between me and Jan Sadevka. He was complaining that he couldn't get decent violins for his students. So I said, well, I'll design you one better than a Stradivarius, as a sort of a joke. And about a year later, he said to me, where's this violin? I'll be too old to play it if you don't hurry up. So I started to uh, get serious about it, and we found that it wasn't a joke after all, but some of the uh, re-engineering of the violin looked very promising. The order was tall. No one had successfully re-engineered the violin for 400 years. After all, the original was pretty good. But David Sugden thought he might be able to make a few improvements using some modern-day engineering principles. From an engineer's point of view, the 16th century design is like a temperamental prima donna. Change one little thing, like the type of wood or even the varnish, and the sound of the whole instrument is thrown out. That's one of the reasons cheap violins produce such poor sound. They're made out of cheap wood. David wondered if there was some way of changing the design of the violin to make low-quality timber sound better. Imagine these two rulers of violins. This one's made out of expensive timber, and this one's made out of, well, very cheap timber. When you vibrate them, you find they sound very different because they're made out of different materials. But for rulers, there's an easy way to compensate. You simply make one longer than the other. Not exactly the same, but very close. But when it comes to the violin, there's no easy way to make expensive wood and cheap wood sound the same, because the violin is such a complicated design. I mean, there's nothing obvious to lengthen or shorten, for example. So the trick is to actually redesign the violin and make it more simple. With a more simple design, there would be ways of compensating for the cheap wood by doing the equivalent of changing the length of the ruler. After all, musical sounds are essentially just vibrations. The most significant simplification was to the sound post inside the violin. This was detached, allowing the top of the instrument to vibrate more vigorously, which produced a lot more volume. But unfortunately, it also had the effect of distorting the sound. David compensated for this by modifying the bass bar and put in extra vents to let more air in and out of the instrument. David doesn't actually build violins from scratch. He simply modifies the already available cheaper instruments. And has he produced a Stradivarius for yarn? Well, I think there's nothing sensational about it. The, the modified instrument simply has more volume and better resonance. And in, in developmental terms, somehow, you can stretch it further. You can play more complex pieces. You can even play uh, 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 major pieces of music. And it produces adequate result, which is a real improvement. From a musician, that's a tremendous compliment. And David Sugden's now looking to go into production. The modified violin should eventually sell at the cheaper end of the market. Hopefully. And when you get to number seven, 